Hi, Dennis Weiss for Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town. We're at the Dickin Community Foundation in Dickinson County. No sign behind us today because the wife wasn't here to stick it up for us <laughs> in a hurry. But we're being hosted in the conference room, the old Astor Bank, 418 Northeast 3rd Street. You have to come down here. It's quite a little business generator that Mr. Kohlhoff has put together here. With Bruce Dale. Hello. Good, Good morning. morning, sir. How are you? So yeah, I'm terrific. You made it back from Dallas. <laughs> I did. You, I, you're into town for a little while? A couple more days, and then I'm back to, uh, to the Big D. Okay. Yep. Wearing a Ben Hogan shirt. Yep. So I, I hear you're personally advising down on the Ben, ben Hogan yeah. golf course. Yeah, that's, down there, right? uh, my advice on golf would be practically worthless okay <laughs> but it's fun so so yeah. when i heard you were coming back through our mutual friend rick studeren he says uh, bruce is coming back maybe you should do that interview you guys talked about last time and i said <laughs> maybe we should so here we are yeah well so, it's good to be here i i uh, always enjoy talking to you and talking to my friends here in Abilene. That's great. So that's precisely what i want to yeah. talk about today for the benefit of our yeah. town so you know you came here as a CEO of Alco, and yeah. you served Alco, <clears throat> and you also, from the time you came to Alco to the time you moved to Dallas just recently, you served in so many capacities here that were important to us, whether it was Eisenhower Foundation, whether it was the Community Foundation, whether it was just being involved with local government, or just being the guy in the audience that said, hey, I've got an idea. So that service is why I ask you to come back today. Well, thank you. I, and I don't know if I even call it service, Dennis. I call it just, it was just a lot of fun, getting a lot of things done in a, in a, in a very, very uh, uh, great place to live. Okay. So I, as I thought about this, I thought it would be great to ask Bruce, how does Abilene look in a rear view mirror? Well, you know, you know it's... Uh, Number one, I really hated to leave Abilene, and it was yeah. just for some personal reasons having to do with uh, grandkids and kids and uh, to say, hey, it's time for me to, to go someplace else and, and do some, some things. Abilene is a, is a wonderful place to live, and I, I think that probably people become very, uh, they, they just take for granted what they have. You know, it's one of those things that I always... Everywhere in the world that happens, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. And it happens, that, by the way, in, in, in Texas also. Yeah. Uh, I recall, you mentioned the Eisenhower Foundation, the number of people that I've talked mm -hmm. to who live here who never go there, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I recall uh, my wife who grew up in Queens in New York and uh, had never been out to the Statue of Liberty right. until we were married and we were mm -hmm. both in our early 30s. So you do become very accustomed to what you what you have around you, and oftentimes that becomes that generates and or degenerates into a, 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 a not a lot of enthusiasm. So from a guy who traveled around the United States in leadership roles <clears throat> in business, very successfully moving business along. So Abilene in a rearview mirror. What kind of a community do we have, Bruce? Well, like every place, you, we have a community that's diverse. I mean, uh, and but, you know, in many ways, but particularly, let's talk about how we think, okay. you know, what our goals are. And uh, I oftentimes think about people who say, well, I don't really want to see Abilene grow, as an example. Mm -hmm. Well, the alternative to Abilene not growing is uh, falling into disrepair and eventually death. Okay, it just happens that yeah. way. It happens in a business. Uh, you know, people say, wow, we don't want to grow that business. Well, if you don't grow it, uh, you, you'll get consumed by something by somebody else. Abilene uh, got so many good things going for it. Uh, we gonna take advantage of every one of them. I mean, uh, I talk about. I'm so happy to see that that we now have a, a couple viable businesses out there on uh, at one exit. We now have another exit yeah. to go, yeah. and uh, take, taking full advantage of what I-70 really means. Uh, I think just. Uh, and I'm glad to see that you still have a, a lot of involvement in the Eisenhower, but that's one of the things that just really, that's, 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 our, that's our star. Yeah, and, it really uh, is. And, uh, and, and, you know, not so much many other things that we think that uh, we have uh, some tendency to want to cling on to the past here. And uh, okay. the past is, is something we should, we should uh, maybe celebrate, but not cling to. So let's 
But I think everybody that's ever seen our face in this camera knows what we think about Eisenhower. I don't think there's much ambiguity there right. about you and I and Eisenhower. So I, I feel safe we can use him in this example. So Eisenhower is the epitome of history yeah. for what you he's, just he's, said. Exactly. So, so why are you and I both passionate about the visibility of Eisenhower when it's really history? Well, Eisenhower brought a lot to the to our art tables as people who not only live in Abilene but also who live in the world. Right. Uh, you know, he. Um, I I don't think that you necessarily celebrate Eisenhower as much as you celebrate the what he what he brought to that table. What right. what what were the important pieces of his of his contribution that ha had nothing to do with him maybe personally, but he brought to the table. So Elizabeth and I stood in a booth at the State Fair. We were scheduled from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And fortunately, a couple long of day. yeah, long <laughs> day. A couple of volunteers who were camped out from Abilene, camped out down there having fun, came to relieve us about 6:30 in the in the afternoon. So, but still, we talk we talked to a thousand people. 5,000 people walk by us, but we talked to 1,000, and the way I can assure you that's a fact, we had boomerangs on them that said, come back to Abilene, which is Julie Roller's idea, brilliant idea, yeah. right? So, but anyway, we handed them people. You didn't get a boomerang without talking to Elizabeth or I, and we had the big graphic that the, Julie's team had built of the town of Abilene in pictures, and one of them was a statue of Eisenhower. So we talked about everything on there. I would walk people all the way around. Now. What's your favorite thing about Abilene? Have you been to Abilene? Yes or no? If this yes, what was your favorite thing? And then we would go around the rest of that picture talking about all the things in Abilene. It was really a fun well, thing really to good. do. Yeah. But when it came to Eisenhower, yes, I was there in fifth grade. I came with a class trip or sixth grade, long time ago. Ta -ta -ta. And somebody would sometimes say something about Eisenhower, but it was an opportunity for what you just said. I go, you know, here are the things that Eisenhower had his hands in that persist today, that, that are so important to the economic growth of America. You know, that little cul-de-sac in the suburbans? Yeah. Uh-huh, suburbia came about during the eight years of prosperity of Dwight David in Eisenhower. 50s, absolutely, and, and you know, and certainly not forgetting the highway system uh, and other mm -hmm. things that, that caused us to be in a position as a country to really grow. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think talking <clears throat> about the historical impact of Dwight David Eisenhower is really talking about economic vitalization, not revitalization because Eisenhower growth continues to happen. That's a growing vital. The attendance numbers are still climbing. Yeah. The researcher numbers are still climbing. We're going to have a brand new museum, literally right. other than four walls and a roof in 2019. So all of this is continuing to still grow. That is the story for me of how growth and history intersect. Yeah, and, and again, not because of Eisenhower the man, but because of Eisenhower the leader. The whole yeah. thing. And, the whole uh, thing. Yeah. All right, so um, you kind of got into growth, and, and that was the other question I told you I was going to ask, so we'll weave this together. Is how vital is it to grow? I don't, and you can speak to business, you can speak to community. Obviously, this is our town, Abilene, Kansas. Yeah. That's the reason I'm asking the question. I think that, you know, that sometimes you, you, uh, I hear people say, well, why are, are all the young people leaving town? Where are they going? Well, they're going to places where there's growth and opportunity going. One of the main reasons I see why growth is so important, uh, uh, and there's a lot of reasons, but that will keep your, 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 your young people here. It's because there's things for them to do. There's places for them to work, places for them to shop. And um, uh, so you don't, you don't get to have one without the other. You want people to stay. You want, you want, more, you want more of the, your young high school graduates to, to continue to live here, or you want more people to come and visit here. You do that by, by, by growing and having more alternatives. I don't know anybody else I'd ask this question oh to, boy. so you're this it. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's walk through no growth. Let's say whether by accident or by purpose, we choose to not grow. Mm -hmm. So let's walk through the economic, what happens in the economy of, of the growth of government services. Is that not 
going to happen? Doesn't that happen everywhere? The cost of government services, don't they always climb? They always climb. Until, and, abs until the town and shutters All of a sudden, doors? you can't afford it anymore. And, and, and who pays that bill with no growth? We do as citizens. If, if, you're, if you're in an environment that has no growth, that doesn't mean that you, we don't operate in a, in a, in a uh, you know, we, 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 outside influences still exist, okay? Yeah. So in, instead of, uh, you, you can't operate without that, you know, and so you, you, you stop growth and but things happen like sidewalks and roads as an example right. continue to sewer water they all deteriorate they all become bad and you have to get them fixed or or not but if you don't obviously you got to you know and so growth will help you uh, in so many different ways but but that's one just just think about no sales tax growth right. and what happens with that right. with that void what happens with uh, you know not having the uh, the growth of a hospital Right, and so those things that have happened here, uh, I think, are all good as it relates to not only being able to satisfy the, the current situation, but be in a position to take advantage of tomorrow. You know, I'm I'm in many ways I'm a stick in the mud as well. Uh, I like things the way they are. I like things around me not to change much. Yet I'm, as you well know, one of the biggest advocates for change anybody's ever going to run into. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because it's right in yeah. my mind. It's not because it's comfortable for me. Change. I just got rid of an iPhone 4S last week. So where's it, where's it at? Yeah, it, you want it in a museum? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's in a drawer at home, just in case this newfangled one fails me, Bruce. Yeah. I can go pull the old one out, but. <laughs> I know for the sake of my son who wants to live in Abilene, Kansas, yeah. that it's imperative that I embrace change. Absolutely. I see no, there is no way around that. If you look at what people really care most about, the tax that people complain the most about, and in my mind, rightfully so, is property tax. Mm -hmm. So with no growth for me, no growth of new business, no growth of new opportunity, that increased cost of government has one place left to go, and it's in property taxes. And it doesn't matter what the state legislature passes or, or if it doesn't. If it, you, that's where that money is going to go. Absolutely. And, 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 and none of us like to pay taxes, but taxes that are, are being paid in a, in a, in a well-thought-out, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about tomorrow as well as today uh, effort means a lot. But... So uh, the other thing, I think that you've been, you live lots of places and once Abilene was a new place, you were heavily involved in making sure that Great Plains Cedar had a chance to survive. And so I look at our little town and I look at this next generation of people who are considering staying in Abilene as they graduate high school or come back from K-State or KU or wherever they went to college. I'm looking at that group and I'm saying as a, as a person who sells things for a living, what are we trying to sell to these young people? If, and, and I look at it and say, if we're not trying to sell them growth, we, we just don't have a story. We don't, and, and if you don't have the, the growth, you're not able to do things like the Great Plains Theater. Mm -hmm. You don't have a community foundation. You right. don't have a, a thriving Eisenhower or a, um, you know, we provide a lot of reasons for people to come here. And I think Julie Roller, you mentioned her a while ago, just doing a, mm -hmm. a, a splendid job of, of enticing people to come visit our town. And I, part of that enticement comes through growth. Right. I mean, you, if, if you're just a stagnant little place, like you were talking about the quaint little villages, right. yeah. uh, that doesn't work. And particularly with the younger generation. It might work with old codgers like That's me, right. okay? But the younger generation, no, not, not looking about not looking yeah, for a quaint I, you know, little I don't, village. Yeah, I don't know too many people that if we had a third party in here that we were talking to in this conversation that, that would say, oh, no, I'm not, I really don't want any young people in our town. Right. I, don't want, I don't want your kids or my kids or my grandkids to want to live <clears> here. If they thought about it that way, I think they'd all say, yeah, we'd like to have them. But that next step is the one you have to come to face, face to face right. with, and that is if you want them to stay, it's almost certain you're going to have to grow and offer something different, something more diverse, more opportunity than there is today, or they're not going to stay. Or, and very likely things that this older generation don't even care about. <clears throat> you know, I don't, 
you know, I don't care about all the things I think we should right. have, but they're important in total. Right. I would, ag I would agree. I, I think that uh, maybe some of these economic decisions that we talk about at the, either the city council, county commission, chamber of commerce, these, these different little pods of thought, if you will, um, you need to put a face on that. You need to pick a young person's face and you need to say, what is it going to take to have Bob Jones' son stay in Abilene? Or once he graduates from K-State with an accounting degree, what's it going to take for him to consider us as a place to live for the next 20 years? I guarantee you, number one is a job. Yeah. That's number one. And But be closely behind that, the quality of life and diversity of opportunity comes yeah. You know, a big piece of that, too, and I've been doing some work on this, even in Dallas, um, but uh, so many people don't have a, a plan for what happens next in, in their personal life, mm -hmm. you know, particularly business succession, where you, you know, you don't have uh, a plan for what happens to this business when you're no longer there. Mm -hmm. Ideally, that would, that would become generational so that, uh, you know, maybe, uh, and I, I love seeing the example of uh, West Country Mart as an example, where right. you have, you're now in the third generation of people who are running a great business, right. but it's because generationally they've, 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 they've looked ahead. And, and work together and, to accomplish that. I exactly. can't imagine, I'll pick on Chris, the youngest, yeah. right? Uh, I, I can't imagine that everything in Chris's integration into West Country Mart was fun or easy, because I've seen him stacking shelves, uh, packing groceries. Remember back a few years, all of that. You know, you don't you don't have three CEOs, yeah. right? So the integration there it takes sacrifice and willingness to work together, even in a family like yeah, that. Absolutely. So you look at our community; there are people who do not have any heirs to their business that are watching the program right. right now. That does not mean, however, there's not a bright young person some related to somebody in our town <laughs> that would not love to take over that business, but it isn't going to happen with a for sale today sign. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it can't be happening at the, at the last minute. It's right. gotta be something that, you know, I mean, I love it, the fact that back to, to Wes, but Steve, uh, he clearly says, you know what, Chris is the boss. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, it, it really is cool. You have to and, hand uh, over the, if you're going to hand over the reins, that means you're handing over where the horse goes, by the way, for yeah. those of you who <laughs> yeah. know where I yeah. come from yeah. in the world. But it also, it tells a lot about Steve. He's still there, mm -hmm. and it's not going to go off the road. Right. But, uh, uh, it's, but succession planning, again, particularly in small towns, is really important. I'm amazed, though, even in... Uh, where I live today is how many folks and somehow pretend that they're going to live forever and that that business will will continue without it. It won't. Right. It, it won't. But okay. So uh, as you look back at Abilene, I think you've told me that you miss us a little. I do every day. And you you've told us that it's it was a great place to live when you were here, and it's still a great place to live today. It is. And you have told us that there is a, a diversity of opportunity that the community can choose to prosper in. Right. As long as we choose to grow. grow. Absolutely. Okay. And if we don't choose to grow again, uh, it's not an option. You need to control it. You need to do it correctly, but you've got to grow. So let's put let's talk about the human side of this. I, I I was in a presentation at Rotary. Actually, I was out in the in the having a meeting with the hospital out in in the farmhouse having lunch, and I heard this going to start. So I snuck in the back, seeing as how my wife's the president, yeah, she didn't you, throw you me out, that, right? right? Yeah. So I snuck <laughs> in the back to listen, and and part of the conversation was that that uh, this person's perception was that Abilene is a 50-50 community on growth. That 50 percent of the people want to grow and 50 percent don't. And then through the presentation went on to list the different service clubs they'd spoken at and check marked whether they said growth. So after it got done, I raised my hand from the back and said, so I've done the math on that and that's a 70-30 at worst from the people you've spoken to. So I, I don't think we're a 50-50 community, but here's, here's where I'm going to give him credit for that. I don't think he thinks so either. But I also think that it points out the fact we haven't registered our vote. 
about growth. And yeah. partially uh, before the camera came on, we were talking about people who are just unaware of what's going on in the world. So there's some things that people need to understand and hopefully they'll pull it out of this little conversation. It's time to get engaged in choices about your community. Absolutely, and I, I, I not just your community, but, but everything about the, the environment in which you live. And sometimes we, we, I, 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 I fear, I, our, our example, your example was my daughter, who yeah. is an educated, bright young lady, professional, and not knowing what's going on in, in local or state or government yeah. Relation is just, yeah, crazy. Now, so. uh, I know we're about out of time, but I don't blame her for and others like her uh, for tuning out because tuning in costs a lot of energy and emotion. But I guess my message, and I'm pretty sure yours, you can tell me if I'm wrong, is that it's imperative that our young people get engaged because succession planning, we got to hand the city this state, this nation over to these people. Can't do it if they're not engaged. Yeah. Can't do it easily or well. No, and by the way, you're, you're going to hand it over. That's right, So we it, are. It's, it depends how you want to choose to hand it over will make all the difference in the world. And uh, Can you believe we've used 25 minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. Bruce yeah. Dale, so glad you're yeah. back to, for yeah. a visit, and thank you for doing well, this thank with you. us. Thank you, Abilene. I, I still look at this as my, uh, my home, and uh, so it's only a few days a year that I can live here, but I love this town, and, and my, uh, my hope is that you'll continue to make it a great place to live and a great place to, to shop, a, a great place to visit. That's terrific. Can't end it better than that. I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. This is Bruce Dale. He's worked for all of us at one time or another, and he's still doing the same by appearing here today. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Have a great day.